I've seen a lot of questions uh, crop up about what I mean by intellectually induced asexuality. Now, many moons ago, many, many moons ago, you, you might recall, some of you might recall that I made the statement that one can either, either love women or one can understand them, but one cannot truly do both. And I hold firm to that statement. I believe it holds true. And I believe the study of women will bear that out. And for clarification, I'm not biologically asexual. I certainly find women attractive uh, sexually, um, and uh, that hasn't really changed. What's changed for me is simply the study of women. I look at the Stardust persona and his evolution intellectual evolution is having studied women in virtually all their facets and their many interactions with people with them with their own gender as well as with men and I've grown to understand them much as I suppose a botanist or a scientist might study uh, plants the means by which they exist photosynthesis for example and in understanding that you understand the basis of how plants exist how they go about their business in understanding women, how they interact with others, with, the, with each other, with men, it's quite similar. The result of that really is, for lack of a better description, a kind of cold, rational understanding of what the human female is and what she entails. There isn't much room for love, and I'm really not fond of that term. I think it's ethereal and uh, and somewhat amorphous, and I generally don't like it, but for the sake of you know, convenience and convention, I'll use it here. So I, it's far from hating women, I don't. I'm, I'm, I don't particularly like them either. I'm just utterly indifferent to women. I look at them as objects of study, essentially. Nothing more and nothing less. And one must ask the question, though, in, in truly understanding women, and like I said, I hold uh, firm to that statement that I made, made many moons ago, What, in understanding women to their core, what is left there to love? And much of the love that men project onto women uh, is simply related to the mystique, this, this veil of, uh, of misunderstanding, this veil of mystery that women project onto the world, onto, onto the, the male world in particular, as if they were some inscrutable object, uh, inscrutable uh, mystery, inscrutable uh, discovery. Yeah. And, and, and no matter how much you would poke at it, you couldn't understand it. I think in many ways, uh, what I'd, I'd argue primarily Barbara Russ and I have done, because we more than others uh, try not to blow smoke up people's ass and we try to get to the heart of the matter, try to truly take women under the microscope, this is really the first time anyone, to my knowledge, at least in, in an open public context, has, has, has dissected women to their utter core and what, what they're basically about. And in doing so, all that mystery is gone. There's no mystique. There's no veil of discovery. Uh, there's nothing mysterious about them, nothing ethereal. They're quite simply... Uh, creatures, animals, like, well, we're animals too, men, but uh, that can be understood on a very basic uh, level. It's, it's, it's quite easy to understand them because their needs are quite simple. There's nothing mysterious about them. Now, that women are erratic in their behavior, that does nothing to contradict uh, the some basic simplicity of their behavioral mechanisms. So, like I said, without that, that mystery, the mystique that they project onto men, essentially, and men are just sort of left uh, with their tongues hanging out of their mouths, uh, puzzled, you know, never understand women, blah, blah, blah. Well, in the very particular details of some individual woman, perhaps not, but the general principles, yes, you can understand them, and they're very easily understood. It's not rocket science. Far from it. Anyone can understand this. Yeah, you know, this is not. Uh, no one's being asked to do you know advanced differential equations here. This is this is just it's really simple. In understanding women, I ask you, 
and I and I don't need to ask myself because this is my own personal feeling on the matter is what what is there left to to love? There's also nothing to hate. It's just a woman to me is an object of study. I have simply a cold, disinterested interest, if you want to call it that. And that might sound paradoxical, but yeah, I'm I'm interested, but then again, I'm also disinterested. I'm sort of yeah, it's just a, it's a kind of a cold, rational, scientific interest. There's no real emotion. It's just something I want to understand. I kind of want to understand the entire world. That's just my nature. I'm, I'm an inquisitive individual, but that's what I mean. There's not a lot left to love. And, and so a lot of the sexual energy <clears throat> that I might feel towards a woman uh, automatically uh, becomes or gets toned down because of that. Naturally, because I mean, part part of part of getting worked up about how glorious women are, <laughs> allegedly, is is that mystique. It's also the mystique of the overinflated value of sex. Now, many of you who've been in relationships will remember, you know, having sex so many times that you become glutted, and after becoming glutted on sex, you just don't really care anymore. It's not even interesting. I imagine if you will, eating Ray's Pizza. For those of you who are not denizens of New York or have never been there, Ray's Pizza is a sort of famous New York variety of pizza. It's very good. tastes very good. Um, you'll put on weight probably eating too much of it, but imagine every day eating it. Well, first couple of days, delicious, amazing. You try every topping possible. After a week, it's kind of getting old. After two weeks, you can't see pizza at all anymore. It's a bit similar with sex. Now, the caveat here, of course, is that... <laughs> Sex, unlike Ray's Pizza, has a lot more advertisement uh, going uh, behind it, right? I mean, people, it's part of our biological nature. Um, it's part of our drive, reproductive drive. And so the overinflation is is almost inherent uh, in, in the product itself when, when one looks at sex as a product. However, however, women themselves overinflate the, their primary value to men. I mean, how many times, quite frankly, have you uh, lain in a bed with a woman after having copulated with her and just thinking, I don't even want to be here anymore? Um, you know, you've ejaculated, you're, you've done the deed, and you've lost essentially all interest in her person. Now, I'm saying what many men think and feel and perhaps are reluctant to say because, you know, they'll commit some great social faux pas, but that's often the case. I mean, you just don't really have a whole lot of... You, what are you going to talk about? There's just not a lot going on. So, I mean, a lot of it just boils down to sex. And when you look at it, sex is highly uh, overly, overly inflated. It's overly inflated, one, because it's a, uh, a biological drive we have, you know, the reproductive drive. But also, uh, because of that, because of that reproductive drive, because it's innate, inherent, congenital, it's projected into all aspects and echelons of society, and women themselves know the value they have being reproductive vessels and projected into the rest of the world. And, of course, there you have, once again, overinflation. But if you understand women, the way they tick, how they actually are, then the value of the product they offer off automatically drops uh, significantly. I mean... Uh, if you thought if you thought a, a female at some point in time had been a, a Porsche, uh, maybe she's a a, a used uh, banged up Volvo now. I mean, just not the best analogy, but it's just not uh, it's not particularly interesting. And yeah, you know, sex feels good, but uh, you know, so does uh, uh, smoking a joint. Uh, so does. Uh, I don't know, uh, lifting more weight than you did last time at the gym. I mean, there's a lot of things that, I mean, there's just nothing particularly special about sex other than the fact that the world, and particularly women, tell you that it's special because they're the ones offering it to you. This is textbook con man uh, babble. Yeah. The, the con man tells you that something is really good or really amazing irrespective of whether or not it is or not. Yeah? I mean, it's his job, in this case her job, the con woman, to convince you of the great value of sex and, the, and hence the great value of the female itself, add all the mystique and mystery into it, 
Yeah. So what do I mean by intellectually induced asexuality? Like I said, it's a combination of understanding what the female is, how she operates, coldly, rationally taking under, under the microscope of analysis of the human mind, of the male mind in particular, and just uh, and dissecting her on a mental level. And then, in addition to that, uh, you can add to that the fact that sex is just overly inflated. It's good, but so are a lot of things. But the fact that we have this reproductive drive, the fact that the world uh, posts images of it all the time, the fact that women want to convince you that their primary asset they're, that they're offering to you as a man is, is just this incredibly amazing thing. Uh, well, quite frankly, none of this really leads to some kind of a form of cherishing or, or loving women, if you want to use the term. That's what intellectually induced asexuality is. It's simply understanding women in their totality in a general sense, such that uh, feelings of affection have all have completely disappeared. And the only thing that's left is kind of a dull lust that most of the time isn't worth pursuing anyway, because once again, you recognize that sex is uh, a product that is highly uh, overly inflated and has been oversold and uh, quite frankly uh, lied about. In, in terms of what it actually can can do for you, you know? so it's not a difficult concept to understand. Um, now, I happen to be a very cerebral individual. That might have something to do with it. I've always been this way. You know, I, I've always enjoyed dissecting and analyzing. It's just my natural inclination. But I think this would be true of virtually any man who understands the way women actually are and how they operate and how they tick there's no great mystery to women and once you remove the veil of the mysterious there's not a whole lot left um, there's no reason to uh, hold them in any sort of angelic light anymore um, a lot of like i said a lot of the libido the, the desire for sex the desire for women comes from the mystique the mystique they project onto the world particularly into the male world um, and it's, it's this basically this twofold combination, understanding what women are, how they operate, and understanding that sex really is, it's nice, but so are a lot of other things. And, and quite frankly, the, the, the price attached to sex is often uh, a bit too high, especially if you have an unwanted pregnancy, STD, so on and so forth. It's just a waste of time, ultimately, in my eyes. Um, you know, I, I, the only time I could imagine even bothering with it, if there's literally some woman just knocked on my door, didn't want to, I didn't have to talk to her. She just, you know, would lie down on the bed and I just, you know, let's fuck and I didn't have to talk to her. I blow my load and that's, and she goes home. Not even a single word exchange. That's all. That would be, you know, acceptable. But, you know, the chances of that happening, it's not even something I really particularly desire. It's just something I think, okay, I could do that. So, yeah, this concept of intellectually a induced asexuality isn't difficult to understand. I'm, I do not want to make this video to clarify that. Pretty simple, pretty easy to get. Uh, and I think any man uh, can, or if, if he so chooses, can, can, uh, can reach that understanding without, uh, without too many uh, difficulties. Anyway, I hope that clarifies some things. Um, I'm approaching my 15-minute limit. So everyone, take care.